Hello again. Six weeks ago, Puffin Books, which used to publish marvellous stuff for children, uh, for example, C.S. Lewis, E. Nesbitt, that sort of thing, brought out a book called Black in Time, the most awesome black Britons from yesterday to today. This may be seen in the thumbnail to this video and I give a link to the Amazon page for the book in the description to this video. It is written by a woman of whom I had never heard, but um, she appears to be a television presenter of some sort. Before looking in detail at this book, we should note that the title is very precise and tells us exactly what the book is or should be about. Britons who were also black. That sounds clear enough, doesn't it? What is a Briton, though? Let's check that we know what and whom we are talking about here by looking up the definition in the dictionary. I'll use the Oxford Dictionary of English, but you'll find that Collins and Webster give much the same definition. Let's see. Britain. One, a native or inhabitant of Great Britain or a person of British descent. Two, a Celtic inhabitant of southern Britain before and during Roman times. That second definition is worth holding on to for a moment as well. There, yeah, that's plain enough, isn't it? In the description to this video, as I say, I give a link to the Amazon listing for Alison Hammond's book. If you click on it and then click on Look Inside, you can read the first few pages of the book for nothing. We do so and read what the author has to say about the Romans. She says that people have the idea that they were all white, but that this is not true. OK, we could talk about this and we could talk about all the mosaics and statues and paintings of ancient Rome in which 99.9% .9 of the people are shown as white, but all right, let's leave that for now. She mentions the Roman invasion of Britain and then she starts a long section about the Roman emperor Septimius Severus. Now, at once we smell a rat because, of course, this man wasn't a Briton at all. A few years ago, every schoolboy would have known the difference between the ancient Britons and the Romans. They were on opposite sides, they were opposite nationalities and clashing cultures. But Alison Hammond seemingly doesn't know this, because she is putting Septimius Severus forward as a black Briton. Which is weird. It is true that he fought a military campaign in Britain for three years against those living in what is now Scotland, but that didn't turn him into a Briton. My grandfather spent three years fighting the Germans in the trenches of France, but that didn't turn him into a Frenchman. The other point is, of course, that not only was this fellow not a Briton, he wasn't black either. His father's family were Carthaginian, which means that his ancestors on that side came from what is now Lebanon, and his mother was Roman. To claim that this meant he was black is completely loopy. So the book begins with a very long profile of somebody who was not black and was not a Briton, which isn't at all promising. There's a great deal about this man who was not a black Briton, then she moves on to the so-called Ivory Bangle Lady of York, whose skull, uh, somebody once suggested, might make her from North Africa, or indicate she could have been from North Africa. This is just the claim which was made about the so-called Beachy Head Lady too, until the DNA was tested and it was found that she was from Cyprus. There is no earthly reason to suppose that the woman from York, known as the Ivory Bangle Lady, was black. And when I say no reason, I mean literally no reason at all. After dealing with these two people, we jump one and a half thousand years forward to the time of the Tudors. As Hammond says, that's a pretty big gap in time. <laughs> she also says that 
That's not necessarily because there were not black people living in Britain and doing awesome things between the Romans and the Tudors. Lord knows who these people were, the black people doing awesome things in Britain between the time of the Romans and the Tudors. We're, we're not told. Just to remind readers, she's written a heap of stuff up to this point with all kinds of facts and dates about the Roman Empire, but we have yet to meet a single black Briton. Now, I wonder if anybody would care to guess who she tells children about at this point, now she's got to the Tudors. Why, that's right. It is, of course, the famous black trumpeter, John Blank. There is, however, a problem here, because although he was certainly black, there's not the least reason to think that he was a Briton. There's good reason to suppose that he came to this country as part of the entourage of Catherine of Aragon, the first reference to him is in 1507. The last mention of anything to do with him was 1512. So all we know is that he was probably a foreigner who lived in Britain for a few years. So, not a Briton. The other Tudor she mentions, and he appears in a fanciful uh, diver's suit on the cover of her book, is Jacques Francis. This man wasn't a Briton either. When Henry VIII's great ship, the Mary Rose, sank in the Solent, a Venetian company <coughs> was hired to try and recover some of the stuff which went down with the ship. The cannons, for example, were very expensive and worth uh, recovering. One of the divers this Venetian employed was a black guy called Jacques Francis. The efforts to raise uh, some of the stuff from the sunken ship took place between 1546 and 1548. Following this, the Venetian and the men in his employ, including Francis, left the country and found work elsewhere. So this man wasn't a Briton either. In short, the first part of this book runs on for pages and pages without any mention of a single black Briton. And since this is what the title of the book is, this is odd. A book about black Britons without any mention of black Britons. Then we read about people like the actor Ira Aldridge, an American who had several baby mothers in this country and wrote a misleading and, uh, misleading and dishonest autobiography which he made a number of strange claims. Uh, there's other people like Claudia Jones, who was born in Trinidad and lived in the United States until the age of 40, not having anything at all to do with Britain. I must confess that I'm a little surprised at Puffin Books for publishing rubbish like this. I suppose that they're a commercial company, though, and this book seems to be selling well enough. I dare say that many schools will be purchasing copies. It's in keeping with the spirit of the times. The struggle against fake history when it comes to black people and their efforts to insert themselves in this country's past is a hopeless one. Within a few years there will probably be nobody in Britain left who actually knows about or understands British history.